Okay. It's ready to go. Ready? Mm -hmm. Good evening, everybody. Um, we call this meeting to order. This is a regular session of the Mayor and Council, the City of Disney, County of Cochise, State of Arizona, being held on Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024, 7 or 1 p.m. Now our council chambers here in Disney, Arizona. Oh, Councilmember Juanetta Hill who is not here yet. Uh, Councilmember Joni Giacomino here. Councilmember Frank Davis here. Mayor Ken Budge here. Councilmember Leslie Johns is excused. Councilmember Mal Sweet here. Mayor Pro Tem Anacline here. City staff Stephen Pockin, City Manager Ashley Coronado, City Clerk Tim Cox, Police Chief Jay Ritchie, Deputy Police Chief Jim Richardson, Fire Chief Joe Estes, City Attorney. Thank you uh, for a moment of silence. Uh, a lot of moment of uh, so, so um, to ourselves, and then I'll ask for the pledge of allegiance. So, we can stand for a Well, tonight um, I don't have any proclamations, but since we don't have our public works people here tonight, since we don't have anything before us. I did ask for a an update on the pool, so I'm just gonna. Uh, I did talk to Matt, and he let me know that uh, if you look at accounts payable, the, the the pump is in. It's uh, it's ready to go in, and there actually the company's coming down on this Friday to assess all that and and figure what they need to do to install the pump, and also we'll be working on looking at uh, how to. Hopefully, unstop that one line that's still giving us a little bit of problem. So, um, like everything over the holidays, everything kind of just went by the wayside, but we're back on it. It's a new year. So, uh, I'm hopeful that, uh, that that pump with the new variable speed pump will get installed pretty soon and, and we can get all the lines uh, up and running. <laughs> Most the electrical is done, of course, until the pump gets in, we'll have to wire that stuff up and, and also get the new. Uh, three phase in so we're still uh, still on the task and I think it will uh, will definitely be done for uh for spring. All right <clears throat> um let's go move forward this will be a call to the public we have one person signed up uh, Steve Wilma hi come on up you yeah. give us our three minutes if you could okay three yeah okay thank you well, the biggest reason I'm here is because this parking lot is back. What happened to the, my house? You're supposed to come back, Mr. God. So uh, please address us, and then we oh, don't have to. Uh, here, here's the situation under call the public since it's not agenda size. We can't converse back and forth. You can oh. tell me what is going on, and then we oh. as the council could direct us. Okay. Well, uh, about two months ago, I guess. Asked Mr. Hawkins to come over to my driveway, turn on the pavement. And uh, he did come over and uh, look at the dog meadows there. They really like the pavement and uh, he can paint it with my pavement. And uh, it's got six and a turn, like I said. And they said they'd be back soon, you know, and he did come back, give a sample of it. Uh, I spent months. Uh, what's going on? I've left two messages. I think she, she said, I don't know what's going on here. I didn't know I was get a reply from him except here. Right. So uh, I'm not really sure of everything, but but yeah, the public works director is, you know, we we told the log streaks this year. So um what uh we'll see if maybe I can direct uh, somebody to get back to you and just let you know that what our procedures is for this type of using this, whatever it is that you're talking about, product or whatever. So, okay. Is that okay? 
I guess. I need to make some money off of it on the batteries. Well, I can't do that without money. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Like most things on the holidays are things that kind of we've been out of town, we've been out of town, I've been out of town. So hopefully we can catch up with you. All right. Moving forward, we'll move on to general business. First uh, order business, item one, which is a council table. I'll take a motion for a council table. I move that we pay a council table in the amount of eight hundred and forty thousand two hundred and seventy three dollars and thirty cents. And second. We'll have a motion and a second. Um, yeah, this is a big one because we didn't do it two weeks ago. So questions, anybody on what is on this one? Okay, seeing none, I'll take uh, I'll, you know, a motion and a second to approve the accounts payable in about $840,000 and $840,273.30. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Very none. Uh, the uh, ayes have it. So, moving on to the item two. This is a very big consent agenda. Uh, mainly because the first year we always do reappointments. So what we have tonight is uh, one approval of the minutes from December 5th. We have an acceptance of the resignation of Bill Higgins, um, which as we know, I'll give my condolences. Um, he did pass away. Um, and a approval for a new appointment uh, to the Disney Arts Commission. And then we have seven uh, approvals for reappointment ones that are already on the commission. We have one special uh, event liquor license uh, event for the John Bull on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. and one approval for a liquor, liquor license for the Ballpark Brewing Company that's located at 97 Center Avenue. Anybody would like anything cool from our consent agenda? Yeah. Yes, so city members. Because they're here, uh, I would like to pull item out. Item what? L. L. Sure. So we will pull item L and then anything else? All right. So I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as listed from item A through K. A second. 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 We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda items A through K. As agenda sized, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Very none. The ayes have it. So moved. Uh, moving on to item L. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and good evening, everyone. Um, I, uh, item L is a, a license for a new uh, brewing company in town called Ballpark Brewing. Uh, that might give you a little bit of a hint as to their location. <laughs> and um, uh, if, if if they would, I would like Brian, if you would come up and introduce yourself to the mayor and council and you can give us no more than two minutes on what your plans are. Okay. Um just yeah. You can use the mic, that'd be great. Yes, I would okay. everybody can hear. So um, I'm I'm Brian Bertrees. I'm a lifelong busy resident, born and raised. Um, and uh, as um uh, uh, Mr. Pocken uh, alluded to, uh ballpark brewing company is a, a business rent here. Um, me and my brother, as well as our spouses, have kind of entered into. Um, it's a, a brewery slash restaurant in the um, in the Warren District um, that uh, hopefully will um, bring a little bit of um, uh, help uh, revitalize the Warren community and um, kind of uh, uh, boost uh, uh, tourism in another historic district as well. So um, that's our hope, anyway. Great, and going to be making some new stuff. Or you, you, where did you learn your trade? <laughs> um, so I've I've got experience. I, I worked an internship with um, uh, Victor Winquist at uh, um, the old Disney Brewing Company when I was in in college, and um, kind of picked up the tools of the trade there. And um, now we're just kind of going to be adding our own spin to that. So kind of be doing Disney Blue, right? I uh, know. <laughs> okay. Uh, questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us specifically of the location so everyone knows? Um, so it, it's the, the location is on um, Center Avenue there. Um, uh, just, uh, I guess it would be 
Uh, before That's the four way stop, uh, the, the scrap there's the scrap yard there, yes. with, uh, directly um, separated by the easement, the railroad easement there before the four way stop there. Before the four way stop. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And when will you be over? <laughs> We're hoping next month. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Good for long. Okay. Yeah. So let us know. We'll help you. Yeah. 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 I would ask for samples. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we just oh, yeah. Yeah. Coming soon. Yeah. Coming soon. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you all Thank for you. your time. Thank you. Uh, and then a motion for item L. Anybody? I move to approve item L as presented. Second. And a motion to second to approve. Item L on the consent agenda. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Hearing none. Good luck. And uh, we always like to do small business with yeah. our yeah. hand. For sure. All right. All right. We have one old business. This is one that we uh, uh, put on hold. This is a discussion of possible approval of notice of intent to adopt ordinance 0 2317. This is amending the code of the city of Bisbee, uh, building code. Uh, Establishing uh, building permit fees for uh, solar devices and for fighting for repeal. Um, Mr. Ward, you weren't here last time, but come on up and reintroduce it, and then we'll ask the questions. Thanks. We do we do a um, really good business in the in the solar um, permits, and you know looking at looking over verifying the installation, and um, there, there really should be at this point there should be some. Compensation for the city for the time that we spend there. It should, you know, the cost of what's being done should be borne by the people who are benefiting from it. And the, um, if you look at the the value of what the people are getting, it's not the, the they're not being having to pay for a permit. It's not being passed on to the consumer. In my opinion, it's lining the pocket of the, of the contractors, and I don't think that was the intent. Okay. I uh, know we had questions mainly was on the 12 volt system, which we, we now exempted. If it doesn't hook up to the actual grid, it doesn't have this fee, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, questions among, I don't, do you have some? Or well, else? one of my questions was um, the differentiation between house sizes. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be a difference? I mean, if I have a 900 square foot house, why do I have to pay the same as if you have a 2,500 square foot house? Uh, is there any kind of sliding consideration? The, the elements of the system are primarily the same, except for the number of, of panels that you have in the roof. And the, the verification, the um, going through and looking at the panel is not that big of a part of the job. And so, um, in, to keep things simple, it's best to keep it at one price. So, in other words, can't move all the electrical through the grid and all that and the anchoring, but if you have 10 yeah. things to anchor versus five, it doesn't really matter. Exactly. That's where checking is the anchoring of those and the, and the electrical bonding. And that's done that's done fairly quickly. But you're already if you have to come up on roof, you have to check 15 pounds, you have to check five, it, it's almost no difference. Okay. Okay. More questions. Anybody else? So it takes the same amount of time whether it's a large resident or a small. Yes, ma'am, almost the same, I'd say. Not exactly the same. Um, but we go through, we verify that they're attached properly, those kind of things. So the difference between a large system and a small system is maybe five minutes, maybe 10. And so there's there's not enough difference there because most of it is the, um, the components that are, that are putting the, the power back in the grid and those kind of things that are being verified and the fireman access up on the roof. And those all have to be done regardless of how big the system is. And plan review, right? And plan review. And the plan review is exactly the same. So I do have another question. Sure. Approximately. Uh, okay. okay. We'll see if she's not going to. Okay. Approximately how long does it take for the plan review? Plan reviews for, for these kind of systems take um 15 minutes, probably 20. Anything else? Yeah. Yep. Uh, have you done any studies uh, with us, uh, other cities and what kind of charges? Uh, do you have any idea? Like, have you that, done any comparison to see yeah, what would have been fair? Dupont, that was based on our numbers that we're using. Yeah. We're, we took a middle of the road approach mm -hmm. from um, so many of the um, neighboring communities, as well as, as some of the even the bigger communities in, in Arizona to try to, um, to keep it fair 
but but yet the city needs to be compensated for for the, the time of our staff taking care of these things. We exempted these way back when I was on council, mainly to try to show that we were green and we were willing to go. But now they really are part of the basic a lot of what's going on now. It's it's time that we I feel we need to up ourselves to what everybody else is doing. You're right, Ken. It's turning into a lot of work because there's a, there's a large volume of the system being shut up. Um, more. Yeah, I'm just kind of, it says the permit fee of 175, which is keeping with other cities and towns, which range from 50 to 300. Please know what other cities and towns charge for their plan review separately from the permit. So we've chosen to put the two together. So we're going from, we charged 175. Is that what we did? And now we're jumping to 325. Mm -hmm. So the permit, you refer to under where the oil, under the table. That's what that, and it says the same thing for commercial, but I'm a little confused on that. So I thought we didn't charge, and now this is saying that the permit fee of $175, which is keeping with other cities and towns, which range from 50 to 300. Mm -hmm. So please note other cities and towns charge for their plan review separately from the permit cost. So they're putting together the, what two amounts for a flat fee of 3.5, yep. putting two together would have been 350. I don't know, I'm getting a little confused on that. Well, we didn't charge before. Right. Right. I'm sorry, Sam. We didn't charge before. We, we got enough charges. Right. So where does that 175 come from then? That's we, what the permit fee would be now. Okay. Right. Yes. And then, then you added the the uh, the plan review. Yeah. On top of that. A fifteen minute plan. Yeah, to three to three twenty five. The plan review is for the that would be charging for 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 all the time, or this is all just coming together. Both the uh, if you can just explain it so everyone can understand. Both well, both of them together. Yeah. Because because it's it's not it's pretty hard to separate them out. Okay. So we're charging a seven hundred seventy-five dollars for fifteen minutes of work, is what you're saying. Well, you time well, it's time to use fifteen minutes. Yeah. yeah, we have to understand it's, to to go over the plan depends on if it's a ground unit, a pumper unit. But I don't. I need to explain what you're. But if it's a pretty standard system, it's not as much as a huge system that's ground mounted or more lines. I don't know. That's just for my. Being in construction before, and that's what I would look at. And I will tell you that I look at other cities and talk to some of the other ones, and some of them charge five hundred dollars. It's going to come out, and then they're they go one seventy five, and we kind of come out to review again. <clears throat> you have to dig lines to to to. They have to come inspect the fringe. That's one hundred seventy five dollars. Then they say, okay, now we put the line in and you have to sand it all in and charge another and send by to make sure that it's sanded in for every reports. And I was looking at about that was like thousand dollars. If you were had to actually put lines in the dirt and the dirt and stuff, I was like, we aren't really out of the line here. So yeah. in today's economy, if you get a professional to come out to your house and, and do it and do his jobs. And he comes in a, in a company vehicle, such as we come in a city vehicle, and those kind. And it, it all to get it down for these kind of prices. If you were if you were in the commercial market, it wouldn't happen. Yeah, I know. Call to me. Yeah, just did. Um, it would be nice to um, have seen the other comparison cities, other comparisons mm -hmm. versus what we're doing. I mean, that would be nice to see. I think really the, the bottom line is we need to compensate our um, inspectors. They're, you know, they're doing a huge job. They do all the time. And they're not making a lot of money doing it. And we're, we're lucky to have these guys doing it. And then we're going to have to increase, to get competent people, we're going to have to increase that. And it's going to be increasing the fees. And the fees are pretty reasonable. Why not them work? In Los Angeles before, I didn't want to see fees. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this is very reasonable to think it is necessary to keep, them, keep all people going. My final look was how much does one of these systems cost? And it's a percentage of the overall cost. And it's somewhere around 2% or less. So, that's not, I don't think we're hurting people that are putting up a $3,000 or more system and we're trying to 300. That's, you know. 
part of my responsibility. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and the general fund shouldn't be hit, shouldn't be hurt. It should be coming from the people that have been benefiting from the uh, photovoltaic systems. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> More? Anybody else? No? Cool. I'll uh, take a motion and then we'll vote on it. Uh, I'll let you zoom up. I move to approve notice to adopt ordinance 0 23. Dash 17, amending the code of the city of Bisbee, Article 7.1, Building Code, Section 7.1.3, Building Permit Fees, Establishing Fees for Photoelectric solar, solar Devices, Providing for the Repeal of Conflicting Ordinances, and Providing for Severability. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to adopt Ordinance 0 2317. Have a roll call, please. Councilmember Hill. Aye. Councilmember Giacomino. Aye. Councilmember Davis. Aye. Councilmember Swede. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Klein. Aye. Mayor Budge. Aye. She passes. All right. <clears throat> Moving on. This will be item four. This is a discussion on possible approval of the contract for services with SCS for air control monitoring with the Hillcrest building. Melissa. Slowly moving, not slowly, we're absolutely getting in or done. We are, we are. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I wanted to give you a quick little update. So the contract that you are looking for approval today is the air quality control contract. This was a required portion from the Environmental Protection Agency. So basically, in a real quick scenario, the, um, the Viking, which we've already hired, does all the mitigation, does everything. This company then goes in at the same time that they're in there working on a daily basis and they monitor everything that's going out. They take the air quality um, samples and kind of help to dictate what the mitigation looks like. Uh, once they they do this and complete this, they're also turned around because the other component we have is that we have to file reports with ADEQ. So um, basically, um, we did award um, SCS engineering out of Tempe. Um, the amount of the contract for the air quality monitoring is twenty eight thousand four hundred. They were the most comprehensive and the lowest bid. Uh, in fact, they came in forty thousand dollars under the other bidders. We we at the committee found that to be just. I, I, just such a huge comparison. Uh, we did have a committee of four and we reviewed and used a scoring mechanism um, for these bids. Um, uh, again, they were the cheapest, but that wasn't easy. that was one of the main reasons we picked them, but the, the most comprehensive had a contingency plan built in and felt like their bid really explained what they were doing. Uh, once this contract is awarded and signed, then the work can begin at Hillcrest ASAP. Um, we, we will pull together uh, a meeting quickly uh, based again on what um, EPA wants us to do. We'll do a, a meeting with both contractors and they can go to work. Um, again, just to remind you, they're projecting anywhere from four to eight weeks for completion of this. Um, each day that one contractor is there, the second contractor is there. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, I wanted to give you kind of a dollar update on how this is going. Uh, if you recall, we were awarded $468,000, almost a half a million. So the original, the abatement contract is 217,232. The air quality control is 28,400. The ADEQ oversight fee is 2,000. And then we have some miscellaneous charges, training, and whatsoever of six thousand. This leaves us a balance right now of two hundred and fourteen thousand four hundred and thirty-six on this grant. And there are many more projects that we can do with this, and we are working um, on a I'm going to say bi-weekly, twice a month uh, basis with a representative from EPA to make sure we get the proper clearing for each of the 
different kinds of things we'd like to do. I mean, we're clearly looking into window replacement, not promise anything at this point, but we're starting to go through that process. Great. We, we like being paid by the <laughs> grants. That's good. That's good. Right. Cool. Questions? Anybody? It's, it's been a long time, and we are continuing to, to be committed to the Hillcrest project, and, and I do thank you for all the work that this has taken. Thank you. It's dealing with events, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we did. I did think we I talked with Mr. Cock, and we'll probably put a press release out, especially now that our citizens will see bodies up there working. Yeah. I thought that that was a more time. And they're not drug users. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. So, sorry. All right. Well, thank you. Um, anybody want to make the motion? I move to approve the contract with SCS for air control monitoring of the Hillcrest building. Second. Okay. <laughs> we like that one. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, oh, no, this, uh, for item four, which is the approval of the contract with SCS for the air monitoring at Hillcrest. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, moving on to item five. This is a public hearing and discussion for possible approval of notice of intent to adopt ordinance 0 2401. This is amending the zoning code of the city of Bisbee. This is article seven, sign regulations. This is section 7.2.6, general requirements applicable to all signs by adding subsection eight, prohibiting the placement of signs, cones, that mislead the public into thinking that public street parking is private. Or reserve parking. Um, let's see. Manny, yes. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. Hi, Mr. President. You all. So this is the first time I'm presenting up here like this. Um, so exciting. Um, essentially, I was approached by the Planning and Zoning Board to come up with some sign regulations um, to uh, address the issue of people <coughs> placing. Signs uh, outside their their homes in Old Bisbee, um, essentially misleading people into uh, not parking there, either by signs that uh, mimic uh, official signs, or or using cones or other devices. So anyway, I um, can read uh, the section H of the seven two six general requirements for to all signs if you'd like me to. I'll count that okay. So essentially the wording is it's it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Got a lot of a lot of minutiae to it. I don't know. Oh, okay. No, I'll, I'll just hold off and then I'll yeah. this. okay. You got it right. Already you got the general gist of it. Yeah. yeah. So, so what I what I call this was silly sign. So what I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold a public hearing right now. Sure. Should you do uh, uh, put it forward to us? So um I'm gonna open this public hearing. And I will ask if there is any discussion by members of the public in support of this item. Come forward. If not, I'll ask if anybody that is opposed to this has a um, chance to come forward. And seeing none, any written? No, sir. From the clerk? I see there's none. So, Let's close the public hearing and I'll open up this for discussions to the council members. As I said, this came before the it came before me and we, we talked about it and asked the planning and zoning and, and Emmanuel to work forward on this. And because right now we don't have any in the in the rules that allow us to just go take the signs down and say you're not allowed. So uh, so it did go before PNC and was fully passed. So I'll be the white elephant and ask the question, how is it going to be enforced? Because mm -hmm. that's going to be the main question. I mean, it always is. Because um, of people that park in handicap, how, why is it enforced? I mean, that, that's going to be a question. Well, the sign is, if, if it gets reported or our enforcement officer sees it, you can just take the sign and go away. If you see cones out in the middle of the street that aren't supposed to be there, you can just take them. But what if it reoccurs and they continually, like the like some areas right now, on Tombstone Canyon, they've got the signs on the wall that you know it's just for our our establishment. And then it's not because it's public it's public parking. If they continue to put it up, how is that going to be enforced? Then they'll they're 
under the whole zoning, there is a way to go ahead. The zone comes by mentioning the side of the move forward. So who would be the person that would cite them as I guess? Yeah. Okay, so the bill. I'm just so when I'm asked that question, I don't really know who's yeah. who's as far as like as far as like you know in a handicap zone, that's a police of right. right. So this is different, than right? This is zone, right? But it's it's an enforcement issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Go ahead. So I'm really glad to see this. This makes me really happy. So. When somebody has their cones out, I can actually go and move them and park there, correct? Sure. It's public. <laughs> Not the thing. And have a <laughs> you know, TV dial when they come out. Sounds like somebody has a plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of plans. <laughs> you have a lot of ideas. <laughs> You can do what Mal does and just drive over. There. Yeah, <laughs> you see that. <laughs> um, that was your question. <laughs> okay, no, just a mere statement. Uh, no, I, I, it is becoming more and more prevalent when I've been out there on my little scooter. I see another one, another one, and it's they once one pops up, it's kind of like a Someone else has it's, yeah. it's yeah. aggravating, is what it is. And usually I text the city manager. <laughs> well, that will save some time. All right. Um, any other questions or this is a notice of intent? I'll uh, ask for a motion. It's a long one. Got the, got the wind to do it. Right. I move to approve the notice of intent to adopt ordinance 0 24 01. Amending the zoning code of the City of Bisbee, Article 7, Second. Regulations, Subsection 7.2.6, General Requirements Applicable to All Signs, by adding Subsection H, prohibiting the placing of signs or cones that mislead the public into thinking public street parking is private or reserved parking, providing for the repeal of conflicting ordinances and providing for severability. A second. We have a motion and a second to approve or uh, to notice an intent to adopt ordinance 0 24 only one. Roll call, please. Councilmember Hill? Aye. Councilmember Giacomino? Aye. Councilmember Davis? Aye. Councilmember Swede? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Klein? Aye. Mayor Budge? Aye. Motion passes. So moved. All right. Um, moving on, just be item six. This is a discussion of possible approval to enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the state of Arizona, ADOT, for the coordination of the design of the shared use path along SR 80 from Old Disney to Erie Street. Mr. Mayor. Oh, it's going to be yours. Yes, sir. Uh, this, this, this will be mine and will be brief. Uh, uh, earlier this afternoon, I was advised that uh, this item was not prepared for tonight. And so uh, the uh, staff was asking for you to table till the next meeting. Sounds like a not. Well, <laughs> and others. Okay. Um, with the uh, city manager's uh, request, I make a motion that we table this. A second. We have a motion a second to table item six. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those no, nay. The ayes have it, so moving. That was simple. That's moving on to item seven. This is the discussion on possible approval of award of an architectural and engineering design services contract. Oh, with if you might want to put it on that one. This is a big one. Mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead, Mike. All right, Laura. And I think it's good. Put it out of the package. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a 300 page packet. <laughs> yeah. A visual here, which I believe the survey, site survey was included. Yes, it was. This will just help answer any, any questions here. 
No problem. I've always seen it. All right. Yeah. 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 This is Mike Norman. I'm a construction project manager for the Canaco project. And uh, very excited this evening. It's kind of a major milestone. We're bringing the uh, contract for the architect and engineering team to uh, do the design work uh, so that we can report uh, construction on this project. So, um, what we have is a uh, recommended uh, contract for. Uh, the architect firm of Poster, Mirko, McDonald. They're out of Tucson. Uh, they will lead the team, uh, which will also include uh, Tim Lindhorn as the civil engineer, uh, landscape architect firm, uh, electrical, mechanical, uh, cost estimating firms. Um, let's see, uh, I think that covers everybody um, on the design team. And uh, so the process uh, is qualifications based <laughs> selection, which is required when you're dealing with uh, architecture and engineering. Uh, we put out a, a request for qualifications in, uh, I believe it was in September. Uh, we received three proposals um, from Ryden Architects, out of, I believe they're out of Phoenix. IS architecture, which is based in California, and then poster Mirko McDonald, which is out of Tucson. We had a diverse uh, selection panel, uh, which uh, included Susan Lawson, who's the architect with the State Historic Preservation Office, uh, Carlos Bazan, who is a, a veteran, U.S. Army veteran, and has been a long time volunteer with the National Heritage Alliance and helped out quite a bit at Camp Naco over the years. Uh, R. Brooks Jeffrey, who is our strategic planning consultant. Uh, Becky Roscoe, who is here with us this evening. Uh, he's uh, one of the board members for Naco Heritage Alliance. Uh, myself, uh, Melissa Hartman, who right there, our housing program planner, and Daniel Stewart, our planner. So uh, these folks all participated in reviewing the uh, Status qualifications from the three firms. Uh, we scored them based on uh, an established set of criteria. And the recommendation was that um, the uh, that we negotiate a, a cost proposal, a contract with Poster Merkel McDonald. They were our, our top ranked firm. So we did proceed uh, with that um, to negotiate a cost proposal. And that's what we have uh, before us this evening. Um, the project is proposed to be developed in three phases. So the contract we have this evening is for just phase one and phase two. And I'll use the map there to uh, describe what those are. Um, and the total cost uh, for phase one and phase two is $399,801. Uh, in the state grant, we have a budget of 400,000 for um, architecture and engineering services. So, uh, sure. phase one is going to include the uh, civil work. So, basically, the, the site work. Uh, right now, there's um, there are no uh, viable utilities on the site, uh, there's no paved surfaces, no roads, no parking, um, nothing. Uh, no infrastructure that would be required to rehabilitate the buildings and use them for the proposed community uses. So phase one would be to develop a full set of plans that would be put out for, for bid. Um, and that would include site grading and drainage, um, paved surfaces, parking, uh, underground utilities, including water, sewer, electrical, um, site lighting, landscaping. Um, so basically all the infrastructure needed to support the, the project. Um, and then phase two will be um, to develop uh, designs and to procure a construction manager at risk firm to do the, uh, basically the interior and exterior uh, rehabilitation on building A1, which was the old hospital. 
And this is the building that's proposed to be the museum and um, office space for the Natural Heritage Alliance. Uh, A5 is, was the old officers club. That will be a community center and library, what is proposed right now. A9 and A10 were the old uh, washrooms, and those will be public restrooms. And then the three houses that are still intact, um, the two officers' quarters down here, the C1, C2, and then B5. So those buildings would be uh, under phase two. Design work would be to renovate those, to rehabilitate those buildings, um, do all the exterior rehabilitation, as well as the interior work uh, to establish those for those proposed uses. Uh, the rest of the buildings, the barracks, which are uh, A2, A3 is a mess hall, and uh, A4 is a barracks, as well as A8, and the stage area, uh, A7, those buildings would all be, um, the exteriors would be rehabilitated and ready for uh, the interior renovations, uh, which are proposed in phase three, but that would also be driven by what the program needs are determined, as well as the, the funding availability. So in phase, again, just to kind of recap phase two, uh, basically all the buildings that are still intact, the exteriors would be rehabilitated, and then the interiors would also be done on the, the three houses, uh, the community center, museum, and the two public restrooms. The yeah, stage is uh, also on phase three. Um, so phase three then, which would come back to council as a separate action, uh, would include um, the interior renovations on the barracks, the stage, and also the houses that were previously destroyed in arson fire. Um, and that, what we want to do with putting those off to phase three is to focus on priority buildings. And then also we're planning to go back to the granting agencies to look at uh, reconfiguring some of the funding. Uh, currently the grant has about 1.5 million to redo all the houses. Uh, one of the concerns is that the houses that were burned in the arson fires have pretty significant damage and we need to do some more work looking at those and determine um, uh, what the cost of actually be to rebuild those. And that we should probably move um, what we're proposing to do is move that, the money that's budgeted for those houses into doing the, the site work that wasn't uh, fully funded. Um, let's see. And um, so I believe that's, uh, that's it for my presentation and I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right. So when phase three comes around then, basically we assess money that's left and where we're going to go with that and, and by then you have a better idea on what to do with the rest of the buildings as far as start prioritizing those also correct yeah that's that's the strength <laughs> that's my question what else yeah uh, i don't know if you'll have the answer to this or have an idea uh how much how many jobs you are anticipating to create or that will be used uh for the locals, but for this amount, is there any job or one that will be created that will help the community? Um, in, in terms of during construction, yeah, yeah. Um, well, we anticipate, for example, um, as I said, the the um, the site work mm -hmm. will be put out for bid. So uh, local contractors that do site utility site work, uh, there, I believe there are some here that. Uh, have done work here in Bisbee. They, I, I don't know them necessarily located in Bisbee. They may be in Sierra Vista or other parts of Cochise County, but that work will be put out to bid. So local contractors certainly are are uh, able to uh, to bid on that work. Uh, the construction manager at risk uh, is basically a contractor that will manage the various um, um, trades and uh, different types of work that will be done on the project, for example, roofing, uh, carpentry, um, adobe work, which tends to be more specialized. I and mean, we have a harder time finding people that have that specialty here, at least so far. Um, and uh, 
but other things like electrical work, plumbing, all those kind of things would be subbed out. So again, those are, we have local contractors with, with those licenses and skills, so they'll be uh, able to uh, bid on those projects as well. And then when we do get into phase three, doing the interior work uh, for the uh, various buildings, uh, as well as the houses, uh, again, that will be put out to bid for uh, contractors and, and local contractors will be able to bid on that. In terms of actual numbers of workers, I, I couldn't give you that right now. But but those are the types of jobs that will be, or the type of work that will be uh, available. Mr. Mayor, uh, just based on past experience, I would I would estimate that we're going to be looking at um, at any given time anywhere between fifty and seventy five trades people working on the site, not all at the same time. So do we give it the I mean priority for? Uh, Oh, the priority, by numbers. Yeah, the priority for local contractors rests with you. Okay. Okay. So uh, now, um, also in more recent experience, we don't see too many local firms bidding on projects like this. City council, or excuse me, city hall is a case in point. Okay. And so, um, if it if it comes down to uh, a point where you feel local preference is necessary. There may also be a price to pay for local preference, so you want to keep that in mind. And I don't believe we have anything in the existing code that, that allows us to um, use local preference as a, a criteria for awarding later. Mm -hmm. A lot of communities do, but I don't believe we. we uh, Can I throw in something? Yeah. Sure. So um, nope. we are in discussions with Cochise College okay. to have training programs in the construction trades for training for things like Adobe construction because there is such a dearth of people who have that experience. So um, I think it's a, a, a good side thing. We're also looking at having volunteer do things like make the Adobes and those sorts of things. So okay. mm -hmm. um, if I could also add uh, in terms of the, the procurement process with the construction manager at risk process, that's also a qualifications based selection one of the things we can include as a criteria, and, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not necessarily local preference, but we can ask as part of that process how a, the CM at risk general contractor exactly. would include uh, local, local hire riders. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, local hire. It doesn't have to be, to be con the contractor. This is, yeah, what I'm alluding to. How they would yeah. provide opportunities for local contractors. Exactly. How they would go about selecting or encouraging local contractors. So that's something we can look at Thank as you. we move forward with that process. What's the estimated time to develop these plans and designs? See, uh, November on this thing. Yeah, they, they, I believe they have a timeline in there. Um, from the schedule, let's see what I recall. I think we're going to look at starting site work um, early summer of this year. It was contact run from January to November. Yeah. yeah. So getting the, uh, the plans designed, the site work will be a full set of plans. They'll be the 100% design because that'll go out the bid. Um, and then uh, for the uh, building rehabilitation, of course, that'll require another procurement process for the CM at risk. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll probably be looking at initiating that process probably April, May. But site work, we're anticipating probably, probably June. Just when it gets nice and close, nice and hot. <laughs> and then it'll rain. It'll go be a drain. Yeah. Uh, more questions, anybody? I think, <clears throat> thank you for a very good uh, presentation. Um, I know that uh, we have your compadre on over here. Yes, uh, Brooks, Brooks uh, and our safety poster are um, online in case uh, there's any, any questions for them. What do you have any for the architect? Um, I believe, didn't he do the library? Correct. So we have some, we have you know, he did the whole thing about the library and art, this architect. So very familiar with our, our city. So I'm glad to, to see that we continue that. And Mr. Mayor, no. yeah. uh, Mr. Poster and his firm 
maybe a little slightly different name at the time had done some of the initial planning work at Camp Knock back in 2015. 2015, they did the master plan, and then Corky did an update for us free earlier. He um, didn't do it free. Two, I know it wasn't no. free, but two years ago? Or no, or the update was done. Was done this year, or uh, in 2022. Right. It was 2022, right? No, 23. Well, it was, it was this year. I know I shouldn't even brought that Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, uh, he did the update uh, in Yeah, the bottom, yeah. bottom line is Mr. Poster and his firm have prior experience in giving camp knock activities. So uh, and that, that was a positive factor in this selection. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the factors. Their familiarity with the site as well as their proximity to the site. Um, and so they're, they'll be able to, uh, there, there won't be a, a steep learning curve with this one. I just want to make people know we've used them before and we haven't had any issues at all. And the, the library is one of our biggest. Um, anything else? I'll obtain a motion then uh, for item seven. I move to approve award of the Camp Naco Architectural and Engineering Design Services Contract Phases 1 and 2 to Port Foster. Virgil. Virgil McDonald. Second. And thank you. <laughs> and you're out of 399801. <laughs> <laughs> you finished. <laughs> That's what we hear, man. You only get the second for part of that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to leave the money outside. <laughs> okay, now that was a good motion and a good second. So we do have a motion and a second to go ahead and approve the architecture and engineering design services for Camp Malco. Uh, let's, I think we'll just say all those in favor, say goodbye by saying hi. Right. Opposed, nay. Very none. The eyes have it, and I'll be in tomorrow to sign it. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We're looking forward. All right, um, let's move on item eight. Item eight is discussion about approval of a lease agreement between the city of Disney and Cochise Farm Reduction to lease the office space located at 62 Brewery Avenue, number four, which is the lower city park on um, North Gulch. Um, Mr. Park. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good evening again. Um, as many of you know, um, we have been approached by Cochise Farm Reduction um, a couple of months ago uh, with the uh, intent to utilize one of the offices that the city maintains um, basically underneath City Park in Brewery Hill. And um, so uh, Ms. Funk came and met with the mayor and I uh, along with a couple of, of her team on her board. Um, and then we had a subsequent meeting uh, with um, with Mr. Estes in attendance. And uh, the overall theme of the thing is that some of these services uh, that Coaches Farm Reduction already provides uh, needs a home. And so we thought that uh, that particular space, which is now vacant, would be a suitable place for that. Obviously, there were some concerns about some potential uh, activity and uh, uh, and we discussed that very thoroughly and very candidly. Um, and it is agreed uh, by this approval of this document that no activity that um, is in violation of federal or state law will take place on that property. Or, and I might add, city code. So, um, uh, Mr. Estes has drafted the lease that's before you this evening. Um, and I believe that legal counsel for coaching is not Yeah. 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 Staff is um, uh, recommending this based on conversations that we've been having with Coaches Harm Reduction and the input uh, from the city attorney and their attorney. And uh, the space is available at this point. Um, and at this point, um, since 
Lou is the expert on the services that they provide. I'm going to yield to her to introduce yourself, uh, as if you don't know her already, um, and to explain a little bit what their what their plans are for that space. Yeah, go ahead. Thank okay, you. Cool. Um, so previous to this, you know, Country's Farm Reduction, we've offered mobile services throughout the county. So we've run a mobile service out of the plan. Um, and so when the mayor and um, my board initiated this, and when I was in conversation with the mayor and city manager, I wasn't quite sure how we wanted to use this space. It um, kind of comes down to like what the people of Bisbee need out of the space. Um, and so we've decided, and we don't yet have funding for the space, we're working to secure that. But the idea is to provide fixed site services for folks to walk in and get peer support services. So for those of you who don't know what peer support services are, it's um, walk-in basically casework. Um, so folks can walk in um, and a peer support specialist, which we have multiple um, certified peer support specialists on our team, um, can work with individuals and help them get IDs, get medical care, medical appointments, um, food stamps, access, all different sorts of things like that. So the idea is to center the space around offering those services, which Otherwise, are not available in Bisbee. The only place in the county peer support is available is here in Southern Douglas. Um, so we would be providing something new here in Bisbee. Um, and we would also be offering um, food services, working with Healthy Bisbee to provide, um, have food, walk in, I mean, just like stuff in the fridge or like commodities, basically, not any kind of meals. But um, so that's kind of the idea. We're working, we're working with the community food bank to get funding for the space, and we won't know for a couple months. Um, so we're still developing what our plan looks like and uh, what the space will look like and how what the hours will be and who will staff it, stuff like that. So I'm just here for any questions. All right, I'm opening it up for discussion. Okay. So what happens if you don't get the funding? I'm not sure yet. Um, we could potentially use funding from a different source, um, but I don't really want to open. See, right now, my staff is really overwhelmed. Um, the demand for our services is very high, um, and we don't quite have enough staffing support to um, shoulder all of the, all the demands, or not demands, but um, soliciting services that people ask us for. Um, so I don't really want to open the space until I have funding for it. Um, but we have many funders, and I think other people with um, potentially a legacy foundation or some of our other funders would be interested in um, helping us support for the space. Would this uh, have like a lot of operations? So it could be, I mean, what kind of uh, schedule do you have? What do you it just depends on the, the funding that we can get. Um, so it, it, just staffing capacity, how much, how many hours a week we can be open. Um, and have peer support specialists in there work with folks. And, and that would be basically ex exclusively for this for this service. No one is going to just be hanging out there using it for other other yeah. okay. So um, if it's past tonight, um, will you immediately occupy and then start uh, developing using it as a kind of a base? Probably, I probably not, um, just because. We don't have a reason to oh. until we have a plan in place oh. with the money in place to open the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're going to open it, open it the way you want it, like not to do that's, that's, that's my thinking. Um, I want to be a little bit slower. Uh, we're also like doing kind of an informal survey um, with folks who are unhoused and also just like street population goal of Bisbee to see like. What what are the hours that are work best for people, and what are the services people are most interested in receiving? How long have you been in operation? We've had our five hundred one c three since February of twenty twenty two, but previous to that, we were fiscally sponsored since twenty nineteen. Just to give you a little background. I mean, I was approached by when we were approached by one of your board members and. And so we wanted to look at that and see what we can. Constantly here, we don't do anything for our homeless and that, you know, this is not, you know, I think providing space is what we can do and things like this and let the, the NGO stand up and do the, do that because we don't have the, you know, they can go out and find funding. I, I, I have a hard time finding funding. So mm -hmm. I 
seeing what other cities are doing. I mean, if I had the budget they did, we could do more, but we don't have that budget. So, so, but they do work, even though even them work with NGOs and nonprofits to help out their cities. So I think this is a first good good chance to try to do something for us here and we'll see how it goes. Um, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest, uh, I asked that this get tightened up pretty tight on this lease that, that we want everything to go right and make it a real good synergy and, and not have it a, become a, a, a nuisance for the, the business owners in the area or anything like that. So you're, you're well aware of that and you talked about it. And so that's <clears throat> that's my idea of it. And I'm hoping that uh, we can make all this work and, and, and hopefully get some help for the people that just don't have the ability to go out themselves and manage all the, all the minutia that it takes to get to get the things that are out there for them. So that's, that was the idea. Yeah, go ahead. And thank you. Further to that, um, a couple of things that this agreement does for the community is it, it makes formal um, the city's commitment to help these folks. And in turn, um, having our commitment to help them gives them a better chance to get the funding they need. Right. And so it's it's really a lot more beneficial than just unlocking a door and providing services. It, it opens, it's a gateway to getting other services provided that we might not be able to do otherwise. And we've already had experience with that this year. Right. We we don't get the grant money and you will, but if we can provide them that's why I call it synergy that we can work together and make stuff that will that will help our they're all residents, so I mean they're all, they're all part of that, you know, our responsibility. So sure. So where are you currently operating at? So we're renting one of Premier Alliance's buildings um, on the campus on Knuckle Highway. So it's a 1500, uh, sorry, 4600 square foot facility. So we just don't need any additional, like it's basically a closet for us. So we won't start moving into that space unless, you know, we actually have a plan in place to use it in a specific way. Well, so we that's need, our. We don't need storage. No, we don't need storage. <laughs> we got plenty. We got more than we need. Yeah. Anything else? One more question. Okay. For some reason, you did not utilize or you come to the conclusion you won't be able to use this building. Is there anything in the contract where we can retake that building back? Is there a time frame? I mean, I know the lease is for five years. For some reason, a year passed, two years. I mean, that real estate is there a way where I said, do you have a limit or a limited time or you can? I just want to ask Joe, I didn't have the chance to read uh, the detail of the contract before I asked him. Oh, like if I'm not using it? Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I guess my idea is if you find you can't find yeah. it, you can't do it. Yeah. Under this contract, it says within 30, 60, 30 days of notice, so we just okay. take, take it down. Yeah. If we, then, yeah. yeah Either one of us can take okay. it down within, was it? Three even, years? even though it's a five year lease, yeah. there's a termination clause provision in the box that can be terminated by the If it has not been utilized, right. so certain, we can go back and say, and it's yeah. not. Mm -hmm. um, one more. There are there are what? One more question. One more question. Okay. okay. Um, because we do have individuals uh, in that location that have uh, taken up residence in the open space, etc. We're not looking at bringing in. Um, I think that you being located there would have a positive impact and address some of the concerns that you would, you would be attracting more individuals coming into that area and just being, just being there. So I think overall, if you're able to actually get the funding, it would have a positive impact on the community overall. Thank you. Yeah, the plan is to work with folks, you know, and inform them that they can't be taking on state property and working with folks so that they have their solutions. All right. I'll uh, entertain a motion for item A. I move to approve the lease agreement between the city of Lisbon and Cochise Farm Reduction to lease the office space located at 62 Bird Avenue, number four below City Park. A second that. 
We have a motion and a second to approve item eight, which is the lease agreement between the city of Disney and Cochise Harm Reduction for Sixty Two Brewery Avenue. Okay, great. Any breath? All right, take the voice vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Very none. The ayes have it. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. Keep us surprised. Thank you. Thank you. So, before I turn over to number nine, which is the city manager board, I just wanted to say very quickly, Happy New Year to everybody. And, uh, and you know, I hope everybody takes note that we're back. We're moving forward on many items here. Um, this is uh, it's important to us to move, but I think as a as a group here to to help all of our citizens in, in whatever way, whether it's housing and and um, Camp Baco and of course uh, these type of things that help our homeless. So um, and our hopefully the sheriff's staff will come back before us. So I think uh, I think we're all operating on on, on a pretty good basis here, and I appreciate all of our council members and and all the support I received as the mayor from all from everybody. So. Anyway, that's my report, but I'll get it turned over to the real report. <laughs> I don't know if it's the real report, but it is the city manager's report. No, they will not forget. Uh, just a couple of items tonight. Thank you. Uh, it, as always, it um, was good to get uh, a little bit of time off during the holidays to visit the family, but it's always nice to come home too. So uh, happy to be back. And uh, to say we hit the ground running this morning when we opened the office is an understatement. And, uh, you know, to, before I knew it, I had 16 people breathing down my neck needed something yesterday. So, uh, but but that's life and, and, and that's what we expect and, and we're happy to do it. So, even if it is the city attorney. So, anyhow, uh, he, he was one. So, I was happy. Me too. <laughs> anyway, uh, important to note uh, for those of you uh, in the Warren area, um, the field work for the Warren application for the National Historic Area, um, National Historic District, um, is going to be next week. Um, the uh, consultants that you um, hired are going to be in town uh, starting Monday, uh, which I know is a holiday, but they're working anyway. Uh, and they will be here Monday through Thursday. Um, there will be a notice going out if it hasn't already, um, asking for volunteers, field work, um, where we will need a few volunteers, will take place on the 16th and 17th. So Tuesday and Wednesday um, will be where the most intense work happens because that will be on the street taking pictures and, and taking notes. So um, anybody that um, you may know that may have indicated an interest in uh, participating in the field work, please let them know. Um, Melissa uh, is more or less coordinating that along with the with the Warren Association. Um, and uh, they're already aware and they're already gearing up to help out the consultant on the field work. Um, and, uh, uh, and then we'll wrap up on Thursday and uh, I think we'll probably have a little bit of a Get to oh. order for lunch on Thursday? Uh, I think probably Wednesday. I think Thursday. Probably Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. The volunteers will be done by Wednesday. Yeah. So so we're going to try and do something to appreciate the folks that come out um, and, and help us with the project. So uh, anybody who's listening at the moment or uh, may see our notices later, um, uh, we can use your help and we'll be very happy. Uh, to have it. Um, in contrast to the one that some of you remember from a few years, 10 or 12 years ago, uh, this is going along very smoothly. It's going along very quickly. And we expect to uh, have a nomination, a finished nomination form back to you for approval probably early in the spring. Uh, you will recall but, uh, but the last attempt took years. And so this is now, they're getting the benefit of some of the data that we collected uh, 10 or 12 years ago. Uh, but by the same token, when we went to reprocess the application, we were told by SHPO uh, that it's been so long that you're basically gonna start over. So that's what we basically going to start over. Part of it is, is uh, improvements in technology. Uh, and most of the technology that we needed now has 
was not at the county offices, the planning offices, tenders go, it's there now. Uh, so that has made the process a lot smoother, a lot more efficient, a lot quicker. Um, and so we expect to be able to send this thing back to Washington again, hopefully before summer. Um, and uh, they usually make a pretty fairly quick quick for federal government time decision. Um, it, it, it could be in the fall. So um, I'm really excited that we are getting this far this quickly. Um, and for those of you who were with us for the first round, um, it uh, and that was really the second round, but the first round from my experience. Um, I, I think I think what we're going to send Washington is going to be a far better product um, than what we than what we did the first time. So, um, and we're real happy so far with the consultant. Uh, so there's that. Um, also, um, wanted to report. I'll probably put a list. Yes. Do you want to say something, Melissa, or you think you covered? It? I think you covered it. I mean, if, if you don't mind, sir. The only thing I do want to make sure for anybody listening. Okay. Thank you. Sir, this whole name on here. Here you go. All right. That's true. Uh, one of the points I do want to make for anybody who's considering volunteering is to make sure they understand you are not knocking on any doors, you are not going in anybody's home, that this is a sidewalk survey, um, and that you will also, you'll be trained by the consultants, you'll know what to do, you'll have your assignments, so I don't want anybody to be too concerned that they're, you know, up there knocking on doors, because they won't be. Um, I guess the last thing I can add is um, a lot of just to add to what um, Mr. Pockins said from the last survey, um, this consultant was able to upload almost all of that information, sort through it, get it into the correct format. So yes, there's work to be done on the sidewalk, but there's only 176 new um, dwellings. Uh, whereas previously we heard there were over 800 or 400 or some ridiculous number. So it, it is moving and I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I saw her waiting. Oh, no. I didn't. Know I was you. looking at her. I was, I was trying not to touch my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. Uh, item number two. Um, I and, and this will be available to you in detail if you would like to see it. Um, but I just thought I'd like to report to you tonight. Uh, that based on our grant activity uh, from actually um, late 22 through the end of 23, okay, so a period of about 14 months, uh, the city succeeded in being awarded $21.37 million in federal and state grant money and also some um, private foundation grant money, as you know, that. Um, what Mike was talking about earlier was uh, uh, partially non grant money. So, um, I, I, you know, for a city that has 5,000 inhabitants roughly and uh, a general fund uh, budget of about $9 million, that's incredible. Okay. Now, keep in mind that 16 million of that 21.3 million is two grants. Well, it's two projects, four grants, two projects. But that in and of itself is phenomenal, okay? Um, in, in, in my experience working with small towns, um, this, this has never happened to me, and I'm very grateful that it did um, in this particular instance, but it also shows um, that the city is willing, able, and very aggressive at uh, knowing when money is a, a, about to happen and being able to go and get it. Uh, so that's the bright side, okay? Um, unfortunately, uh, the amount of money we received in water and sewer pipes is zero. Not for lack of trying. But the fact of the matter is, um, what happens above the surface of the ground often gets higher priority than what happens below the surface of the ground, even though most of the activity below the ground happens above the ground. Um, so <laughs> think about that. We can't that tonight. Um, your homework. I already know. So so anyway, um, I just I just wanted to 
mention that because it is extraordinary. Number one, th these are extraordinary times. We've had some extraordinary opportunities. We've seized them. We've taken advantage of them. All of it will benefit the community uh, in a positive way in one fashion or another over the next five to 10 years uh, as these grants lay out uh, and the improvements are made. Um, obviously, there's still out there um, a, a lot of infrastructure money, a lot of which hasn't even been released yet um, for grant applications. So we continue to uh, find ways to get those pipes uh, put in the ground to um, replace some of our 100 plus year old uh, infrastructure and uh, hopefully improve those areas of town. And everybody thinks old Bisbee has 100 year old pipes. Well, so did more. Okay. So Two thirds of the community, at a minimum, uh, are operating on largely um, 100 year old pieces of ductile iron, or in some cases, terracotta. In some cases, we may still find a wood pipe in the ground somewhere, which is something you know we found when we did the sewer. Yep. So, um, so um, I feel very good about that. If you want a comprehensive list, uh, we've got almost a comprehensive list. Uh, on, on the whiteboard in my office, I'd be happy to share it with you if you, if you want to see it. Uh, and then the final thing on a personal note, um, this occurred to me over the weekend um, on January 2nd, 1984. I was sworn in my first term as a city councilman in my hometown at the age of 28. <laughs> That began my public service, and I don't think either I'm really good at it or I'm really stupid. <laughs> but uh, it's been a 40 year odyssey of working in small towns in three states uh, in this great country. And I guess I just don't know when to quit. So every time I give you guys notice, you extend me for another year. So um, I'm real happy to report that, uh, you know, I'm still standing, haven't caused too much damage. And uh, and I think along the way, we've all collectively helped make where we are a better place than we found it. So um, thank you for multiple opportunities to continue doing that. Um, and uh, hopefully we will have a really successful year getting some of this money during the projects. And Mr. Mayor, that concludes my report. All right. Thank you very much, and and I'm really happy to be able to keep you. So you've been actually good year for me. If you've been in December, it would have been a few days short. <laughs> that was not a goal. Yeah, it just occurred to me that it was going to happen. Well, you know, you gotta look again. All right, my friend. All right, I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> second. Got a motion, second to adjourn. All those favor. Aye. Okay. Start. Start adjourn. And...